you know, I, th I think you ought, to, you ought to tell people very quickly why they should buy this book and, what, and, and, and what, in what sense you're warning them. Because it, any, anyone who reads this book, uh, and most of you won't have read the book because it has yet to be published, I think, will discover that um, uh, we could be in for an uncomfortable time. And we're in for an uncomfortable time because you have been reading the signs that are presented to you by Gaia. Yes, it, it, it's a complex story, really. And I think most of one's thinking that's worth anything comes not from reason, but from intuition. Um, many of my scientist friends don't like that. They yeah. would draw, well, they, they're still back in the 19th and 20th centuries where you did everything by rationally. And in fact, the word irrational implies uh, loose or bad thinking. I'm afraid it isn't like that. All things that really matter uh, uh, are intuitive. And uh, the understanding the Earth system is one of those things that you cannot express formally uh, uh, in mathematical terms easily. The, the climate scientists tried to do it. There was a man called Lorentz many years ago and discovered that if you try to model uh, a system containing more than two differential equations, and you've got to have, not two, but hundreds or thousands if you're going to look at the Earth system. They go, it goes chaotic as soon as you put any realistic things on it. So what they tend to do is they have to model it that way uh, uh, by putting hundreds and thousands of equations. So they either fudge the equations and do linearizing uh, modifications so that they never go the thing never goes cha cha chaotic, or they never run it beyond what they call equilibrium conditions. Uh, they never allow it to behave dynamically as a living thing does. Uh, now, th this is absolutely fatal as far as modeling goes, and it applies both to biology and to uh, uh, climate science, geophysiology. And this is why we're finding now that the great gathering of scientists that formed the IPCC, some of our best climate scientists in the world, with the very best of intentions and the most modern and expensive equipment, are failing to predict the climate that is with us today. Um, the, 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 uh, the most glaring error is that they, they, the sea level is rising twice, nearly twice as fast. Uh, as they were predicting. And this is a serious matter if you live in London, to get an error that big. So uh, to understand the Earth system, you can't avoid approaching the whole problem to a certain extent intuitively. Uh, and uh, this is where I think Gaia came in, because most of the first part of it uh, was intuitive rather than uh, uh, rational. Um, I can't really explain that more. And I think it, it has some deeper significance in that one of my reasons for being somewhat pessimistic about the future of the present generation of humans around is that I think the problem is right beyond us. We do not have the intellectual capacity yet to solve the system of living properly with our planet. Is this a question just of intelligence or is it a question of wisdom? Well, wisdom is what counts. Intelligence yeah. is more attached to reason, especially yes. the tests of it. Yes. I'm going to throw the, 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 this open to questions in a minute or two, but I'd quite like to just get Jim while, we, while I have his undivided attention um, on two things. One is, one is the hostility that you provoked uh, among, bi among um, both geologists and biologists, which always surprised me because it seemed, it seemed obvious to those of us who came to this problem for the first time that, that you must be right. That, that if, 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 the if the atmosphere is regulated by life, then the Earth is a, the biosphere is a, is a self-regulating system. But people wouldn't buy that. And the second thing that I, I'd just like you to make clear for people is in what sense um, Gaia is self-regulating if it means disaster for us. Okay, yeah. I'll try and answer those two. The, I think the reason for the hostility with biologists was I made a ghastly mistake, one always does in life. I talked to what I call middle management yeah. biologists who were, always work by the book 
and the book said that what I was saying was rubbish, and therefore it must be rubbish. And they had as their primary spokesman Richard Dawkins. Yes. Now, you can't get a much more formidable opponent than that. And he really rubbished everything I said in his book, uh, what was it, The Extended Phenotype. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I sympathize with Richard because he's a damn good writer. I think he, we, we both of us would be glad to write as well as he does. Yep. Um, uh, and he's got a good logical mind. But it was just unfortunate that um, he didn't understand this, uh, that, that rational thinking is not the way of, uh, of answering the problem. And what he said roughly was, there is no way for any organism to regulate anything beyond its phenotype, that's to say its, it's sort of outer carapace, uh, so it could never possibly regulate the Earth. Uh, what he didn't understand was that uh, the whole Earth system made up of all the organisms, the atmosphere, the oceans, and the, and the surface rocks, together as a cooperative system can regulate itself. And that was understandable. Um, it, I didn't understand it myself, so at first I couldn't really reply to the biologists, only say, I know you're wrong, and that doesn't get you very far. Um, uh, uh, and it wasn't until I made a, a very simple model called Daisy World that demonstrated quite clearly that um, you could get self-regulation by Darwinian natural selection without any, any problem at all. And it took a long time before that got swallowed. You, you also had trouble with the geologists who, uh, who felt that the Earth was, um, the Earth was, a, was a, uh, an inviting habitat in which, which life could invest in. But not, not in this country. That was mainly America. Yeah. I think uh, American geologists tend to be, have a, a training that is rather macho and uh, Germanic in, yeah. uh, in attitude. The Herr Professor says this, so it must be right kind of thing. And I was saying something that didn't jar, uh, did, jarred with their, their teaching. That, they were much more broad-minded in this country, I found. And fi my last question there was, if, if Gaia is a self-regulating system, how is it that we're all going to perish? What, ah. is, it, what, is, what, is, going to, what is going to go wrong from our point of view? From Gaia's point of view, and I speak for Gaia much more than I do for people, I don't think she gives a damn for us. Uh, uh, as far as the planetary system goes, it will always self-regulate yeah. so as to sustain habitability. And uh, what we've done is to mess about with the atmosphere, and much more importantly, I think, mess about with the land surface in the way of farming, taking out natural ecosystems that were previously regulating the climate. We've done those two things, a double whammy, and so, naturally, as any living thing would do, when it finds it can't self-regulate and can't defend, it's moving to a place that it knows it can defend, and it's moving to a hot state that it's been in many times before, and it can self-regulate quite comfortably, and we'll have to make do. We won't be destroyed by any manner of means, but the amount of land that will be available for people will be much, to live on, will be much less than it was.